What's up guys? Saturday. Y'all know what day it is. Matco Michaels here. Let's take a look. See what he's got. Come on. I got a socket missing. It decided it wanted to fly this morning. It'll be all right. It'll show up. It'll roll somewhere. I'm gonna have to get little man on here and get him to hunt in it. Ah, yeah. Well, if he don't throw more down there with it. <laughs> I tell you what, if he's on here, he's doing something. Well, them right there is pretty sharp. Them socket holders. Yeah. Uh, I like those. I. I thought that I liked the stand-up kind better, but after seeing those, I, I think I like those better. Plus, there's not nothing to break off. Yep. It's the only problem I have with those others is you'd be kind of in a hurry and reach over to grab it and it'd be locked or something, and then, well, the whole you'd need a new post or something on it. Or like mine, when them ones that lock, the balls keep falling out. It's always something. Can't keep my balls in it. <laughs> I don't even lock them no more. I just set them on there. The only time I don't ever take them out of that roll card anyway. Well, the only time I really ever tried to lock mine was if I was moving it, and then I'd forget to unlock them. And which I was always moving it because where I worked at, we had they provided the toolbox, but it was stationary. It was bolted to the floor, so you worked yeah. out of a roll card basically. And, You'd load that thing up, roll to the car, do what you had to do, then I'd take it back and unload it. I'd always forget. Well, what new you got? Well, this is new to the truck. We've talked about the quarter inch magnetic sockets and we've talked about different ways to make a magnetic and stuff. Mm -hmm. I actually had a customer that order the three eighths, so I just show that kit off. I know we don't like the color of the case, but uh, these are the magnetic three eighths and it comes and I, I fairly good set i believe an extension and a, a swivel too um and then we also carry the deep in the three eighths as well so what's the part number on that it's going to be sbmp 246v That's a nice it is um if i had it to do over um i say that i would uh but I'd probably just go ahead and buy the magnetic sockets mm -hmm. to begin with. That way there's no if, ands, or buts. Because in some of those places where you're reaching and just hoping that you're around the hole, that right there uh -huh. would be, I think we've all closed our eyes and just stuck our <laughs> hand down in there and seen what we can. Well, I figured that a lock-in socket and that magnetic insert is probably the best thing you'll yep. ever have. Yeah, if you have the lock and extension and then that too. Yeah, the I lock mean, and extension, that's what I mean. Them things is worth their weight in gold. Yeah, I know they sell the inserts to go in here. I'm just confused on what keeps. I know it works well, but at some point the insert's going to start coming out. You can't get them out. Oh, can you not? They're <laughs> magnetic in there? Yeah, I put one of them in the, uh, my 16 millimeter wobble socket so I could use it for bell housing bolts on a big truck. Now it's just a magnetic socket. Well, I needed to take it out because it wasn't deep enough. Well, you can't go in the other side of it like you can, uh, you know, through the three eight straps. <laughs> <laughs> I took a peek and everything else. I finally just said, you know what? You're, that was... you're a magnetic socket now, so I just <laughs> bought another one to. That's it. Well, yeah, I, I didn't think about it being magnetic you uh, can, on the uh, back side of it too. So yeah, it just... you can't get the son of a gun out because they fit in there so tight. You yeah. Know? I don't know. Well, I don't... I just uh, I, I just bought another one to go in the set so it'd be non-magnetic. <laughs> yeah, you got both now. Because so I thought, man, there ain't no way this thing will not pop out. It's just plastic. Well, see, know? by looking at it, that's what I thought. I thought, well, eventually these are going to wear. The plastic's going to wear from, you know, just normal day use. <laughs> they just suck down in there, and that's <laughs> it. That plastic sort of friction fits down yeah. in there. And when that magnet's on the back side and it locks onto the bottom of that socket, well, hey, I guess we, that's uh, 
That's a good thing. Because I, mean, I thought I'll just pop that magnet out and give me a little more room, you know, yeah. what I'm working on. And no, it didn't work out that way. No, we're not going to pop it out, I guess. Didn't go as planned. Well, that happened. Yeah, so these are the new, I don't know if we talked about these. I don't think we have, but these are the new redesigned sound bars. So, no, this ain't, well, it could be a tool. I don't guess so. It keeps you from going completely insane. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of people just put their phone up on the cow and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's all good and well, but I have lost several 10 millimeter sockets that way. So, <laughs> so uh, and why not just keep your phone on your toolbox, right? So they're the same as far as being magnetic on the back of them. Mm -hmm. So they do stick well. They've made them now to where we've got green and black, uh, but they also got rid of the regular turn knob. Mm -hmm. uh, Mine actually stripped out, so I pulled mine off and squirted it full of glue and shoved it back on there. Well, that's what I was just to say. We did have some problems with the turn knob. It would get to where you were just turning away and mm -hmm. you wasn't turning anything. Um, so this one's more of a push button style. I think we're gonna have a lot better feedback out of that. Um, I like the I like the push button style yeah. instead of the the turn dial. Plus, the turn dial was one of the. If it fell, it was always gonna fall right on the yeah. turn knob every time for some reason. Um, but I mean, it's good. It's sturdy. Still looks really well. People are loving the green. The fact mm -hmm. that they've got colors. If they ever come out with an orange, we'll never sell a black one again. I don't think. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, they they're loving the green. Um, they did put serial numbers on these, so it makes it a little uh, more trackable as far as warranty and stuff like right. that. But hey, and if you if you can listen to music and work at the same time it may just keep you sane for a little while mm -hmm. although there is some people that listen to that music that I, that just makes me mad hearing it so i don't know how it ever <laughs> you know that, i don't know there's some people that that relaxes and there's some people that just i don't know I've seen a lot of interest in the uh snap ring pliers too people mm -hmm. really liking those so they went right with some heavy duty ones yeah people's really liking the fact that you get from the small to the big. They really like the bigger ones. They don't, you know, these are used mainly, um, my transmission guys are really liking these. Um, but the guys that's normally using the smaller ones are like, well, I may need those. And it's like, well, it comes in a kit, it's good. Mm -hmm. There's been a lot of people asking if they show up for the meetup, are you gonna be able to sell them a blue ratchet? Cause they want to buy a blue ratchet well, off this trip. We're gonna try our best. And I said, well, hopefully they'll have some. <laughs> you know. Yeah, we got a, We'll do what we gotta do. We bought at a sales meeting a couple of weeks ago. You know, we had one on, we showed one on the truck about a month ago, maybe, a month and a half ago. Uh, and I thought I really liked it, but this one here is more of a handheld uh, deal. And I had some guys that work at Ford that they have to of course cut the valves on with a computer but they said that it usually takes them two and a half hours before they get all the air out of the brakes something Holy about cow. yeah something about i don't know they said they charge three hours to do it and it, it's just a nightmare to get all the air out and i was like good god it usually takes me 30 minutes to get all the air out and that's because i'm having to tell somebody to pump, pump it, up, it up hold it yeah they're <laughs> telling me well my legs hurt and we'll take them yeah. <laughs> take a minute or two but uh I've been that person in the in the driver's seat pumping brakes for people before too. Yeah. It does get tiring on your legs. And I know some of the computers will actually use the ABS module mm -hmm. to push the fluid. Those are really nice where you just push a button yeah. until your bottle pops off and then you've got a mess. But we've probably all been there too. But this one here, I like it because of the size. It's small, I mean, I don't think I've ever had to take that much brake fluid out right. to just get all the air out. I know some people are going to say, well, that's a small container. Most of them, I think, are overkill. The containers mm -hmm. are really big, and if you're using that much, you're probably just not emptying it after right. after a car. So it has a good size hose, um, but it has this hook. So what uh, I should let me, let me back this up. She shared it on Instagram and maybe the Facebook page, too. They just hung it on the caliper, hooked the air up to it, and pushed the button in, pushed the trigger, and it was bleeding the brakes for them. And yeah. said it took them 45 minutes to do a job that usually takes them 
two, two and a half hours to get all the air out. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's a recall they have or if it's just, I don't know what it is, but um, one of the guys in the shop was kind of leery about it because of how hard it is to breed the Blakes. Uh, so I told him, I said, look, just take it, try it. If it works, let me know. If it don't, you know, just give it back. Well, I got there and he said it worked great. So he actually bought it and there's two other people in the shop that's actually waiting to buy one too. So cool. I guess they, it, I would think it would have to be a recall or they just do a lot of breaks. I don't know, mm -hmm. but um, it does, you know, light, I like it. If it took me three hours to do the, just get the air out of the brakes, I wouldn't want to do me and them jobs. Well, I, don't, I don't know if they're replacing the actuator. I don't know what they're doing to, but that's a that's a while to get air out. Yeah, You're yeah, not yeah. pumping one up that way. Mm -hmm. uh, some, something about, somebody on here is probably a Ford Tech can tell us why it's so hard. Um, I, I have no clue. But. Yeah, it'd be aggravating, wouldn't it? Well, I don't, I've used I've used the brake bleeders that have forced it through the top, through the master cylinder down. I don't like those. Um, I'd rather pull it from the bottom. Yeah, me too. Um, but now I had a couple of bad experiences with with the ones that you because in my experience you get it all hooked up. And then you'd have to raise the car up, or I guess if you ain't working on a lift, you'd just walk to the wheel you just want to go. But we would raise the car up, and then you'd break the line loose, and then you'd cut the machine on. Well, the problem is, is if, if something didn't go right up there, now you're pouring brake fluid and trying to get the car down quick enough. Yeah, it's uh, a big mess. And we didn't have the greatest setup, and it had a chain that like locked it down, and man, you would think you had it perfect until you cut that on, mm -hmm. and then it was a mess. So, we've I've used the machines like Valvoline <coughs> cells that you put all four on there at a time and tell it to do it. Those are great, but not everybody has the luxury of those. Mm -hmm. uh, they bought us those to do the flushes with. Um, they work just that great for flushes, but if you're just trying to get air out, it only spent so much time per wheel, so yeah, it may not get all the air out. But you would hope that it would. But. Mm -hmm. I don't remember how I got this out of there, but it went in there somehow. That's the fun part, trying to put it back in the well, box. Well, I normally do pretty good at it, but I didn't pay no attention. That uh, that scan tool back there is really proving itself too. I'm, I'm really happy with that scan tool. Um, I sell more of those than I do the whole uh, 3.0 unit. For the price element, it's it's awesome. I just, I don't like the doggone annual subscription. That's my deal. Now that one's actually not, a, uh, it can be annual. Mm -hmm. Wait a minute, you're talking about, never mind. We had to pay every year. Yeah, that one don't have to be that way. That one's three ways that you can do it. You can buy the scan tool and not unlock anything and it'll be like a basic, just code reader basically. Mm -hmm. You can pay monthly or you can pay one time to unlock it and it'll forever have what it's got in it from that year. So yeah. 2020 down, it would have. That'd be the now, way to do it. Now, come 2022, if you wanted the 2022, you'd have to buy the update. Mm. I don't I don't mind paying for the updates. That's, that's yeah, fine. I, I, was, I don't like paying for something and then you take it back. Yeah, that one does not do that. In fact, our 3.0 doesn't do that either. Once you buy our uh, our scanner and, uh, and your subscription, whether the 3.0, you have to buy the full software but that mm -hmm. one there you can actually choose i've got some guys that pay monthly because they they work on anything and everything and you know this month we may be working on chevrolets but next month we may be working on you know a toyota or something i still say buy the full unlock yeah have it all and then Upgrade. you've always got it i mean you, you don't lose because i bought that otc it. evolve and i like it yeah. But if you, they force you to buy it every year, it's a code reader. Well, see, that's what... Uh, one, and then the same way with my Bosch, Heavy Duty. Man, if you pay $6,000 for something, that's yours. You shouldn't be able to go in there and suck the guts out of it and then be like, I'm sorry, fella, it's going to cost you another four grand this year. Well, Like, see, I'm done with that kind of crap. Yeah. I have a shop that has, I believe it's OTC. Uh, they bought it at Napa, and, and Napa pushes the annual... 
mm-hmm. thing on it every every year. But he's trying to get the company to actually buy one of those because he's telling them like, look, you're paying twelve to fourteen hundred dollars a year for something that you've already paid for the year yeah. before because they don't work on a whole bunch of new stuff. You know they. Well, most, that's the whole reason why I bought the ProLink because when my that Bosch HD scanner, and I loved it, man. It worked great. Man, I loved that scanner. But it was going to cost me forty seven ninety nine to update it. I'm like, well, shit, I can buy this Snap-on for fifteen grand, and it's got every truck, I mean, everything that they offer, and it's good from a 2020 down. Yeah. I don't ever have to, you know, you know it'll be five years again. before we see a you know a 2020 model anyway well see and that's what i tell most people that buy the scanner they, they are like did do you have to pay for the updates yearly and it's like the update yes but are mm-hmm. you really going to see a 2022 next year yeah. no well, well then why buy the software for it you know i would if i bought one of these scanners which i'm not gonna lie i use the 3.0 i mean that's the best scanner i've had i use the 3.0 every time i work on a vehicle but i'm not updating it until i absolutely have to mm-hmm. why would i why would i pay whatever the update cost is at that time because it does fluctuate yearly um which i know maco maco does it from the day you buy the update all year long to the next year you can update it every day it's not one update it's right you can update you know all year long so if in three months they decide well i'll give you a perfect example had a max go that the guy bought the update for and he called me that next monday he said hey it don't have a 2020 nissan on it like you don't have a 2020 nissan he's like no i was like yeah it does it's supposed to it's like no man it, it don't i'm like well i'll come get it so i went and got it sure enough it didn't have it went up to 18 and he just updated it so, this ain't right so i called mac on they're like well let us look into it sure enough when they did the software somehow the 2020 nissan on the goes got left out so they fixed it so therefore everybody that has a go can hit update and they get the 2020 nissan right. now Whereas if they did one single update, well, you're screwed for a mm-hmm. year. So I like the fact that we can fix our mistakes as the ad, as we go, and not just mistakes, but say Ford tells us no, you you can't do that just yet, or like the pass key with uh, Dodge yeah. and Chrysler. For a long time, no outside market could do anything with the, you know the newer Chryslers because of the pass key uh, or pass through. Certain people call it different things the gateway whatever whatever you want to call it well then they released it to snap on and maco to be able to sell a device to get past the gateway well that's great but they sold it in the middle of the year so if you updated right in january and you needed to update for the gateway guess what you don't have it because you don't pay that one time update wait mm-hmm. to go ahead and buy another update or wait to next year right so that's why I like that we can do ours. Yeah. I tell people once a week, go in there and hit update. It may tell you up to date or it may download something. I've never seen one not update two weeks in a row. It, there's always something new coming out. Yeah. Hit that update button and get the most out of your update. I have people that go in and delete the manufacturers like uh, Maserati and a couple of the other ones. Uh, don't delete them. Get the updates. You paid for them. You don't know if you'll see it or not. It may be mm-hmm. rare. But when one pulls in there, you can say, hey, I got the updated information for it. I think the only way we'll see a Maserati is at Walmart in the Hot Wheels section here. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know. I'm just throwing that out there. They, uh, <coughs> there was a car <coughs> in one of my areas that I'd never even heard of. I can't remember what it was. But he had deleted it off his scanner. And I looked on my demo, and it still had it. So I took it up there. Sure enough, it did it. That was... I can't remember what it was, but either way, um, we was able to do it. It had some type of, uh, it was like BMW, you know how when there's get when you change the battery, yeah. it'll go into that battery saver mm-hmm. mode, and a lot of places tell you that you have to take it to BMW. Shit, yeah. Now, these scanners, on, we were right. able to hook it up and take it out of battery mode, and because it had it weird, like it would drive and stuff, but it had a bunch of lights on, and the air and heater only worked on feed it was weird certain stuff didn't work the radio mm-hmm. wouldn't work it was just it was in transport mode or whatever they called it but yeah those unlock it so that's if if you don't want to pay the big bucks for the 3.0 and because the 3.0 
it'll do you like your lab scope your oscilloscopes and mm -hmm. all that and that's great if you know how to do all that or if you want to do all that some shops don't want no part of all that if right. it's that far into it they don't want it if you don't want to do all that just go with a flex mm -hmm. you know you can't plug into that one you can't do an oscilloscope or a lab scope or anything into that one but as far as your diagnosis it'll do it good enough for most folks I post about 99% of the people don't don't mess with a silly scope don't yeah. want to or like me when I finally had to I didn't know what a good one looked like I didn't know what a good wave mm. pattern looked like for that sensor because every wave pattern is different and at the time there was no good references you know, yeah I mean yeah. it's I called Toyota they said do a wave pattern I did it and he asked me if it looked good I said I don't know <laughs> so I ended up having to go get a brand new car and doing it on the, that one too just to know what a one working look like right. and one not so oh well well i guess we're gonna get in here and get back to work but like always guys thanks for watching if you like the video hit the thumbs up check over here for merchandise cool tools and discount goes in the description if you're not subscribed click the button you guys have a great week catch you next time see ya